So if someone says, you know what, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like factory farms, I agree, and I'm a vegetarian. I eat eggs because that doesn't really have anything to do with factory farms. Would that be accurate? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, chickens, you know, uh, unfortunately, chickens uh, have just as much of a horrifying story that we have for the dairy cows, uh, for chicken meat and for eggs. Uh, so there's two genetic strands of chickens now. I mean, that we have, you know, genetically manipulated to be used for our in our chicken agribusiness. Uh, one are egg-laying strands of chickens, and the other are what are called broiler chickens, and those are the ones that are raised for meat. Um, so both uh, chickens, both the egg layers and the broiler chickens, uh, are kept in just absolutely terrible conditions in the egg industry. They are often in what are called battery cages, which are these tiny, tiny cages uh, just crammed in there, um, you know, uh, n unable to even spread their wings. They're so close together. I if you can imagine being in a crowded elevator and it's so tightly confined that you're actually touching the other people in the elevator. You know how uncomfortable that feels and you just like can't wait to get to the next level. Oh, that's their whole life. That's all the space they're given to live, their entire life. Um, so the egg-laying hens are just in, in horrible conditions, um, de-beaked, all kinds of manipulations to their bodies that are very painful. The beak is a very sensitive part of the, the body, um, and they, hot, with a hot solder blade, cut off the beaks when they're chicks, de-beaking in both, both industries, the egg laying and the raising for meat. In the broiler industry, uh, for the broiler chickens, they're in these just windowless warehouses with thousands of birds on the floor, crowded in there, uh, ammonia, uh, the waste, they're just living in their muck and waste. The ammonia can burn their sensitive uh, uh, nostrils, their eyes, their throats, uh, can get very infected and pain, painful um, from all the ammonia uh, in these terrible, um, very confined areas with no ventilation. Um, you know, and it's just so monotonous. You know, if you think of uh, their, their, the chicken's ancestors were um, the wild fowl in like Southeast Asia that lived in the jungles and would f climb up or f fly up to the trees to roost and there's so much stimulation in nature. You've got color and bugs and uh, uh, sunlight. They love to, to bask in the sun and they love to dust bathe. And uh, they, there's just so much life for a, a natural chicken. And in these places, it's just, there's nothing. All na of those natural instincts and conditions completely denied. They are, um, you know, it, it, it's, just, it's just gray monotony. There's nothing, no stimulation. Uh, it drives them insane. And it's just really hard to imagine how miserable, just really how miserable their lives are. Uh, you know, and another aspect to all this is the hatcheries. So no egg industry, uh, no matter the label, all these small scale, cage free, free range, all of this, no matter the label, uh, no egg uh, production can profitably hatch their own chicks. So they're always sourcing their chicks through the mail from hatcheries. And these hatcheries are just brutal, brutal places. Uh, they, you know, a, a, a chicken, of course, the natural way to hatch is uh, in a warm, safe nest with a mother hen. And do you know, it's, it's really amazing, even when the chicks are still in the eggs, uh, they com the mother hen and chicks are communicating. They're cooing and, and clucking and communicating to each other. You know, the, the little chicks are saying, oh, I'm, I'm cold, I need to be turned. There's this amazing, uh, beautiful mothering. I mean, we hear about, you know, a, a, a doting mother is often called a mother hen. Well, that's, that's because naturally, uh, chickens are incredible mothers. This is all completely denied in any egg industry, no matter the label. Uh, no chick is 
you know, hatched in a warm nest with a loving mother? No, they're hatched in these industrial hatcheries in metal drawers where they're immediately thrust onto conveyor belts and metal machinery and have the workers, you know, tossing them about like canned goods. It's horrible. For my book, I, I interviewed uh, a gentleman who had worked in one of these hatcheries and he said, what he told me was horrifying, that they, uh, there's all these um, horrible in, uh, injuries that happen to the chicks in the, in the metal machinery where they get their wings caught or their legs caught and, uh, you know, and their wing is ripped off or they're, you know, they get a big laceration and they're just in pain and they'll just throw them on the floor for the day to just suffer until the end of the day when they sweep them up and throw them outside, still alive and suffering. I mean, it's just brutal, brutal places, these hatcheries. Um, so, so, so they have the issue of, of horrifying uh, conditions coming into the world. And then uh, even in the cage-free and free-range industries, it's really not any better. Uh, so a cage-free operation for an egg-laying facility can be the same as for a broiler, uh, with the way they raise uh, the, the broilers for the meat, it's the same, basically, just these windowless warehouses, thousands of birds on the floor, they're still de-beaked, they're still overcrowded, they're still, um, you know, dust and ammonia and all the stuff they're breathing, it's horrible. So, and for free range, and the only thing a producer has to do, and, and these labels are, are just, I, I'm going to talk more about this uh, tomorrow in my presentation if you're going to be around at, at 11 o'clock about all these labels. Uh, but I'll just say briefly that there's so little regulation on these labels. Uh, uh, in, in fact, with cage-free, free-range, all these ones we're talking about, there's basically zero regulation. All a farmer has to do is fill out a form, send it in to the regulating body, whether it be the USDA or the FDA, and, uh, you know, no one gets denied these labels. Uh, no one comes and inspects the farm. They can say whatever they want. Uh, for free range, uh, the only regulation is that they have to have access to the outside, which could be in one of these big windowless warehouses. They just open the doors to a little maybe, you know, five foot by five feet foot concrete patio that's so unappealing no bird would even want to go out there and they can call that free range. So again there's very little regulation and I'll just um, wrap it up uh, with the end of their life which is always cut very short. A chicken can live up to 15 years uh, but the broiler uh, chickens that are raised for their meat they actually have them so genetically manipulated that they are pumped up and f uh, fully grown at about five weeks. They're slaughtered in a fraction of their lifespan. They live five weeks, that's it. It's all the life they get. An egg-laying hen, you know, maybe a year or two, her egg production will start to decline because of the intensive conditions, and they have so many other uh, little chicks coming in that it's just more profitable to bring in more hens. They'll clear out a whole egg-laying uh, uh, barn in a couple of years, um, so they get maybe two or three years of life, that's it, and they all go to slaughter. Egg-laying uh, hens go to slaughter for low-quality uh, chicken products like chicken pot pie or, or, or chicken ground chicken, things like that. So egg-laying hens are absolutely eaten uh, and are going to um, into the meat production. Uh, so, you know, it, again, it's... Uh, and the slaughtering process is brutal. Uh, chickens actually are uh, exempt from the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act. This is one of the very few regulations that we have uh, for animals in the food industry. We have very few regulations, but um, this is one of them in that it states that an animal must be rendered unconscious before uh, it is slaughtered, he or she is slaughtered, excuse me. Uh, and um, so, you know, but this applies to very few animals that are actually slaughtered. Poultry is exempt, as well as fish and rabbits uh, are exempt from this law. So it only really applies to cows, pigs, and sheep. Chickens are 97% of the animals that are land animals that are slaughtered. 97%. So 97% of the animals that we're slaughtering are exempt from this Humane Methods of Slaughter Act, and it's really it's so brutal. There's, of course, the transportation too. There's so many aspects to it that are horrible. Um, I know I've been talking for a while, so I'll try to wrap it up. 
but with the slaughter, you know, the workers take them roughly by the legs, hang them upside down uh, in shackles. They go through this conveyor uh, that, that's, you know, attached to a conveyor belt. Uh, they go uh, through the process, and they there is an electrified stunning that happens, but this isn't uh, uh, rendering them, um, you know, uh, from uh, feeling the pain. It's not that kind of stunning. It's actually just a paralysis. It paralyzes them uh, so that their feathers come out more easily, but they are still feeling everything. And they go have their throats slit. Um, it can take minutes to die as they're kicking and struggling. Uh, you know, throat cutting is not a quick or painless way to die. Uh, there's many veterinarian organizations that have stated that uh, uh, throat cutting is, is very painful, that it is not the way we should be uh, he he killing animals. But there's no humane way uh, to kill these animals. We can't kid ourselves that, uh, you know, and, and try and, and um, uh, hide from the violence um, that is killing these animals. So chickens have it just as bad as the dairy cows, as you can kind of gather. Uh, um, so I, I, I guess I'll, I'll end with that, and let's see if Will has or Dave has something to add about chickens. I'll add something briefly. Notwithstanding that chickens are exempt from the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act, you might think, well, states have anti-cruelty laws. Wouldn't those apply to these sorts of practices? Well, the answer is no, because chickens are exempt from those too. All farm animals are exempt from state anti-cruelty protections in this country. So, for example, male chicks are completely irrelevant in the egg-laying production process because, first of all, they don't lay eggs, and second of all, they're not genetically engineered to, to grow to produce meat, so they're simply killed in any way that is expedient. And any male chicks can be killed in any way whatsoever. They can be left to starve to death, they can be left to freeze to death, they can be put in hefty garbage bags, and the lit, the tied down, and it's all completely legal. Things that if you did to a dog or a cat, you'd be prosecuted potentially for a felony. In fact, in one case in San Diego a few years ago, Live chickens were thrown into a wood chipper because they, were, um, they had finished their laying years, they were no longer productive, and there wasn't really any expedient way to get rid of them, so they just threw them into the wood chipper. And the district attorney refused to prosecute because there was no intent. There, they weren't trying to be cruel, they were just doing something that was expedient and was part of business. So that's how so farm animals in general get treated, and that's how chickens in particular get treated. And they have somewhere between no legal protection and very, very little legal protection. Yeah, just briefly, I'll just add, uh, I think it's really um, a, a wonderful thing if you ever have a chance to go to an, a sanctuary where you can actually meet uh, chickens and turkeys and pigs and cows and other animals and see them as intelligent individuals, uh, sentient <laughs> Uh, beings with personalities and uh, get to see how inquisitive they are, how affectionate they are, and, and uh, that they are not just uh, objects that, um, you know, just, just objects, just things, but they're actually beings or someone in there. And for me, it's been, it's been great. I've been able to go to probably 30 or 40 uh, sanctuaries over the years. I've been traveling all over North America and, and internationally. And uh, I'm never, I never fail to be struck by the beauty of these animals, actually. And, and I think this is one of the great education efforts we can uh, mount in our society. Besides, uh, I think it's important to be aware of the, of the um, egregious uh, abuse of these animals, but also to take into account the fact that as we uh, have so many stories about do our pet dogs and cats, and, and other animals that are companion animals and how we would never want to do this to them. Uh, one of the great things that's actually happening is we have sanctuaries. And the other thing we're having more of too, which I think is helpful, are YouTube videos, right? <laughs> YouTube videos of cows listening to these people playing music to them and running over and listening, you know, YouTube videos of, of chickens running around and, and uh, being friendly and, and relating. And, you know, I think YouTube uh, in general can be a, f a fabulous uh, tool to help us maybe get outside of some of the uh, cultural stereotypes. And then the final thing I'll just say uh, on this too, I think these are uh, all very important, but again, to come back to this idea that, that um, 
local uh, small-scale agriculture is not necessarily cr cruelty-free. I remember, for example, reading about an undercover study, that uh, investigation that was done in England in, outside of Devon, which is, um, you know, kind of a, a, a new age or kind of prog very progressive area in, in England where pe most people don't want to buy uh, factory farm meat. You know, they want to buy local, organic, uh, free range and that kind of thing. And somebody went into the local slaughterhouse, you know, because we know these big slaughterhouses are hideous, terrible, the line speeds are so fast, the poor animals, sometimes they get... You know, they end up boiling alive and all these other things. But they discovered uh, in this investigation that the uh, small-scale local slaughterhouse that was being used for these animals, chickens and cows and pigs, um, was the, the, uh, the uh, abuse, actually the cr deliberate cruelty to the animals was much higher. Uh, that, the, um, th th that this kind of situation tended to attract uh, sadistic people or people would make people that way and they would begin to really not just kill the animals but really make them suffer before they kill them and so again when we go to Whole Foods or I don't want to pick on Whole Foods but any time we think we're getting something that's organic or something that's better that way to realize that this system brings out the worst in people and there's been studies done, for example, people think the Amish, oh, the Amish must be so great. And I mean, studies of the Amish treatment of animals are, you know, they're very, very violent and, and, uh, and brutal to their animals. And so, we, again, we have to realize that this is a system that thrives on, it's based on violence, and these animals uh, are seen as things. They're not considered legal persons, right? They have no rights at all. They're just an object. It's like... You know, it's like uh, this cup. I can crush this cup and no one's going to take, take me to court about it, right? I can do the same thing to a chicken. I can crush a chicken just like that and it's a thing. It is a thing. It is seen as a thing. It's a property. I can own it as property. So we realize this is what animal agriculture societies do. And so we have to, again, awaken out of this trance that brings out the worst in us.